What's up, everybody? This is Josh coming to you with another episode of the Affiliate Marketing Show. Please be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest affiliate marketing news, tips, and trends. Again, Josh from OfferVault.com as well, the industry's largest aggregator of all things affiliate marketing. Make sure you check out OfferVault.com if you need anything related to your affiliate marketing success. We also have Mr. Paper Call Adam Young, as well as the industry legend, Harrison Gewurz. And before we introduce our special guest today, we want to say a big thank you to our returning sponsor, Pinup Partners, the ultimate affiliate program and direct advertiser for Pinup iGaming products. If you're in the affiliate marketing game, you know how crucial it is to work with a reliable partner. And let me tell you, Pinup Partners is just that. With 11 available geos, an impressive reg to depth rate of 33% and transparent statistics, you can count on generating amazing profits. All right. But let's, that's not all guys. Pinup Partners is launching an exciting new promo for Mexico. Drive traffic to the geo of Mexico and get what? What? A 20% bonus added to your payout? This is a fantastic opportunity to maximize your earnings and take advantage of a booming market. Don't miss out, all right? Don't say we didn't tell you. Sign up through the link in the, ex- sorry, sign up through the exclusive link in the description to learn more and get started with Pin Up Partners today. And our special guest is none other than my good friend, Natalie, the head of PR at Click Dealer, a global affiliate network that makes performance marketing accessible, convenient, and human. In short, the kind of network you'll definitely enjoy working with. Natalie, thank you so much for staying up late with us over (laughs) in Ukraine. How's it going today? Uh, Yeah, it's cool. Thank you. It's hot outside and uh, it's cool inside. So everything is just fine. (laughs) Well, I know you didn't walk into Click Dealer, one of the most well-known biggest affiliate networks in this industry as the head of PR. Uh, How did you kind of work your way to that position? Um, You know, I'm sure there's a lot of people watching who are always thinking about how to kind of get that higher title or take on more responsibility within their organization, you know, especially with big companies such as Click Dealer. So how did you become the head of PR over there? Yeah, of course, it, I didn't start as a head of PR. Uh, I came to the industry and to the click dealer company in 2016. Yeah, so many years ago. And I was like a junior PR manager. I didn't know anything about affiliate marketing. And uh, I dealt mostly uh, with conference stuff, with branded stuff. So my path is just a long journey of ups and downs <laughs> while I was gaining my experience um, skills and diving into this vast ocean of affiliate marketing. Uh, regarding the fact uh, that affiliate marketing is uh, such a volatile um, and you need to be so flexible, adaptive, and stress resilient, uh, my path was uh, really um, tough. Uh, though there is no a secret, uh, I was just learning, hard working, and spending all my time, uh, all my uh, working time, and even free time uh, for uh, this uh, topic, this question, and this work. I, I I enjoyed it, and this is the one and only secret. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just realizing we actually entered this space at the same time. I also joined OfferVault in 2016, so it's good to know. Really? We, uh, oh. Yeah, we have a similar <laughs> a similar path here. You know, when it comes to uh, PR, you know, this is something I like to always ask people in this kind of part of the industry. Like, how do you gauge success? Like, what is successful PR? And yeah, like, how, do you how does performance? I guess. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's uh, sometimes tough because, of course, uh, we have our in-house platform. Uh, It was developed uh, by our teams and uh, it's... uh, not only for our partners like advertisers and affiliates, it serves also for PR team. Uh, There we create our UTM links and we see the statistics 
Also, we, of course, use uh, Google Analytics, uh, and uh, though there are still cases when uh, we can't estimate our efforts, like uh, brand awareness, yeah? Uh, for example, uh, when we write some uh, business articles in media where links are not allowed, uh, when we uh, write some educational materials or press releases also. Uh, so, of course, it matters because everyone likes numbers, uh, everyone likes to estimate everything. Uh, though, um, on the other hand, when we hear that, oh, like, I know click dealer, it's it's very pleasant and uh, it's uh, better than any metrics uh, which we can estimate. Yeah, I know a big part of a PR is also going to conferences and events within the industry. Yeah. I know click dealer has a major presence at various events across the globe. What would be your advice to like new companies who are just getting started? They Google like affiliate marketing conferences and they see this massive list of US shows, European shows, Asia shows like where should they really focus their efforts in terms of how to know which shows they should actually go to, you know, have their company represented and get that extra PR push? Yeah, uh, this is a good question. And I think everyone nowadays understands that uh, conferences are just essential. Uh, firstly, for some new companies, um, they need to like estimate each conference regarding their target audience. Uh, I think every company understands its target audience, yes? And uh, at the first glimpse, you can uh, see if it is an overall conference, uh, overall affiliate marketing conference, or it is concentrated on uh, one or several verticals. Uh, from my experience, I see that overall affiliate marketing conferences, they are um, affiliate world, affiliate world Asia, affiliate world Europe. You can find there any uh, company on any uh, vertical. Um, but if we say about something narrow, um, I suggest that IGB is uh, about more about iGaming. Uh, for example, TESS, the European Summit, is more about dating. IPX London is uh, something about e-commerce for us personally. And um, LeadsCon, Lead Generation World, they are about lead gen. Uh, so this is how you should estimate the conference uh, about uh, verticals, about niches, and see if that suits you. Uh, then why I think that that is essential to uh, meet people face to face um, especially after COVID when we all are so hungry for uh, offline communication, you know. Mm, and for me, it's uh, so nice to see uh, newbies, some new people at the conference when they are standing at the booth. They are, of course, smiling and greeting uh, people, but they are so shy, you know. Um, I see them. And I understand that it's their first conference, uh, but uh, their people have the same aim. And uh, the first advice for conference, for newbies, for new companies, is not to be afraid to talk to people, to everyone. Uh, it's obvious uh, that everyone came there to communicate to have a good and fruitful networking and finally to find their new partners, new business partners. Uh, and uh, the conference is just one or two days, so you need to uh, take everything from it. Um, yeah, I feel like also, you took the words, you took the words right out of Adam's mouth. Every time we talk about this, Adam tells us how, you know, when he was first getting started, he just talked to everybody and anybody yeah you just never know who yeah, you're gonna me too. meet <laughs> yeah it's funny you say yeah. that josh because the first time i met the ceo of click dealer was not that long ago it was at i believe LeedsCon in las vegas and mm -hmm. a couple years ago and he got into my elevator at the hotel we were staying at which wasn't even the where the trade show was and we were both wearing um our our passes and he just looked over and was like, 
hey man, what do you do? And it was just, <laughs> it was just that simple, um, which was amazing because I found out that Click Dealer was our customer and I was able to help them, uh, you know, do a bunch of stuff that, that they wanted to do with lead gen. And so even after doing this for so many years, the CEO of Click Dealer still gets in an elevator, sees a conference pass and says, hey, what do you do? And I think that's a testament to the strategy of trade show success. It really is just that simple. And I think people overcomplicate it with trying to be social or what do I say to people or whatever. And I'm not good at those things either. And so I always default to, what do you do? Because I know we can talk about work at least. Um, and it works. Yeah, Have I mentioned... anyone been rude to you at the conference? I mean, that people are afraid that someone oh, will not suit or... I've had, I've had people be rude to me, for sure. Yeah? But you just gotta... Yeah, yeah well, I'll be like, Jesus, I'm Josh. Provider. I'm Josh like, from Offerval. Like, and they'll be like, ah, oh. They'll be like, F Offerval. We don't like it for a X, Y, and Z. And you, I mean, I think that's just part of being in this industry, sometimes you do got to have thick skin. Don't take things personally, you know, believe in your product and, and focus on the people that want to work with you. Don't try to convert people that don't. I also think I said a long time ago. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I think to your point, people look at that as rejection and they seize up. But in reality, what's happening is that person's giving you a gift. They're saying they don't want to work with you and they're showing that they're not fun to work with. And so if you look at it that way, they just saved you some of your most valuable asset, which is time. And so if someone's rude or doesn't want to talk to you, great. Like there's a thousand other people and that's part of the game. Um, and I, I think it discourages people, but you just kind of <laughs> kind of have to ignore it. And I've seen it. I've, I've been involved in it myself. I remember one instance where a gentleman came up to the ring booth and just started pitching me. Um, on what they did and why we needed it. And I just stopped them and said, hey, listen, I, I really appreciate your pitch, but we're not a good fit. Like we could have never even bought what he was selling. And I just said, I wanna save you the time. We're just not a good fit. Like we're, we're not buyers, we'll never buy that. It, it doesn't even work for our business. And he got upset and yelled at me <laughs> for not letting him finish his pitch and whatever. And then he stormed off and left the exhibit hall. And wow. I don't, I was, rude i i literally was like you know he's like trying to sell me tires but i i use a plane like it just it doesn't it just literally didn't make sense you know and um i think people just need to to get over that portion of it and some will some won't and someone's waiting to talk to you so yeah also natalie to, to piggyback off of what you said talking to everybody i think i mentioned this on the show long time ago i don't remember which episode but you just never know where someone's going to end up in this industry. There's so much turnover. So like you talk yeah. to someone, you know, today at, you know, ABC company, they might be at, you know, XYZ company next year and it's a perfect fit and they remember you in that conversation you had with them. So I just think it's always about, you know, selling, selling yourself more than yes. your product. Personal making. brand. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe uh, one day you wake up and think, I am an influencer. I want to be a blogger. I want to be an influencer in the affiliate marketing uh, industry. And I want to uh, make my Instagram like a selling point for each company in the industry. I don't know. And that is why you need to know everyone. Yeah. With click, I with think click it's to interact with everyone, even if there's not a fit, and just be like polite, treat people like humans. Yeah. I've this before but years ago we were brand new ringo was not like big and uh we were at a party that we sponsored and one of the ho one of the co-hosts or co-sponsors of the party grabbed adam and said hey i want to introduce you to this person and this person was not a customer and you know adam put his hand out and said hey you know madam nice to meet you and the person responded with not interested like didn't shake <laughs> his hand. It, was, it was like a casual event and like Oh my to this God. day, I'm like, that was shitty of you. Like, come on. I mean, you that's know? how you burn a bridge like, for I think life. Adam's response was, oh, I'm <laughs> just introducing myself. Like, I'm literally 
trying to sell you anything, but okay, like have a good day. And, you know, I, I always, it's stuck with me. Like I will never treat someone like that at a trade show. And if there's no fit, I'm going to be like, Hey, look, that's just not something we do. Hope you, you know, don't hope you're not mad, whatever, but like, don't be a dick. Like that's just ridiculous. You know? <laughs> Hope a you didn't see are... this person again. Yeah, no, we look, I see all these people all the time that back in the day told us no, and they should have told us no. They we we couldn't provide them with the best product and service to power their business at the time. And we knew that. And we're like, hey, trust us, trust our future. And some people resonated with that, and some people didn't, and we're just did, didn't want to hear it and were mean or rude or or whatever. And it's part of the game. And, and you know, now, God, what is this, like seven, eight years later or whatever it is, a lot of those people that I'm talking about and Harrison knows them, they use Ring Bit of Power, their business. And I don't hold this against them at all because the reality was it wasn't the right time. And if I would have held a grudge. It's still nice to be like human with with people, though. Like I'm sure. not, I try not to just destroy people, but that's just me. Well, you're nice. Like, you know, I, I bring out the special side in people, I guess. <laughs> Natalie, I have what... another example, uh, oh, yeah. in a network, uh, most of the affiliates and or media buyers, solo or teams, they want to work with advertisers, uh, like, um, straight, uh, and, uh, Sometimes when you're at uh, the conference and uh, they say, who are you? I'm saying, I'm click dealer. And they, oh, a network. You're like, Meh. yeah. And I'm, what is the problem with the network? Moreover, we have our smart link. We have our media buying teams. And they're like, ah, oh, media buying teams. Okay, let's network uh, something. <laughs> I want to dive more into the click dealer network here. Um, you know, such a big network, so many different verticals. I feel like I have to ask, you know, what, what are the hot verticals right now? What do you see working? And I know, um, you know, before the show, you mentioned to me click dealers, strategic verticals. So I'd love for you mm -hmm. to kind of touch on that as well as the top three or four verticals that you really think people should be looking at um, right now, based on what you're seeing in the industry. Yeah, uh, as you have mentioned before, we're all multi-vertical and we have received a lot of uh, awards uh, on this point. And um, yes, uh, we have more than 40 verticals nowadays and this is uh, like 18,000 offers in different verticals. Um, but our strategic verticals nowadays are dating, uh, gaming, legion, uh, e-commerce and paper call. Uh, it's like uh, the thing that uh, we are concentrated on. Um, if I start, let me start from uh, dating and uh, gaming because dating is the first vertical in our network uh, since 2012 uh, when we have started. We have started with dating. And um, since the time, we have a lot of exclusive, a lot of uh, deals with uh, partners, which you will not find anyone anywhere else. And uh, since 2019, uh, we have our own dating smart link. Mm, and um, our affiliates can find just uh, all outstanding advertisers here uh, in our portfolio and we always launch bonus programs uh, we have best deals payouts uh, you know um, later we discovered the opportunities of iGaming and now we have partnered also with the popular advertisers and uh, we have our in-house media buying teams, uh, which uh, run dating, iGaming, and games. Uh, so uh, maybe this is uh, more interesting for our partners from that side. Um, we, our media buying teams, uh, they are using uh, progressive web apps. It's uh, very popular nowadays, and uh, it's more convenient to run traffic through them. Uh, so uh, we decided to give them uh, free for free for our partners uh, if they run dating, uh, gaming or games, uh, we can give them free. 
um, about tips, uh, the best converting countries nowadays are USA, France, UK, and Canada. Um, then uh, I said e-commerce. Uh, yes, e-commerce. We have dealt with uh, giants like US giants, like Walmart, like uh, Tamu, AliExpress, etc. There. Uh, a lot of them. Uh, I can't mention them all <laughs> at once. And uh, the the main geos are also USA, it's UK, Spain, Germany, and France. Uh, if we're talking about uh, traffic, it's uh, social, Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, TikTok. Yes, we take TikTok traffic, accept them. Uh, it's also display, SAM, email, etc. And the uh, most working segments are fashion, electronics, travel, financial, uh, etc. Uh, and... Um, so Adam, uh, Adam mentioned get? he met your, well, I want to transition into lead gen here real quick. Cause Adam ah, mentioned, yeah, lead you know, gen. he met the, met the CEO. He asked him about lead gen. Now you guys are doing lead gen. I know uh, a specific offer that you told me about is my home quote. So tell me a little bit about my home quote, how it works as well as just the lead gen, you know, segment of click dealer as a whole. It's just fantastic. I don't know uh, why we didn't do that. Uh, long time ago uh, but only three years ago uh, we discovered this market uh, and we launched our brand our umbrella brand it was called customer direct group uh, now we generate more than half a million uh, leads per month and uh, we have partnered more than uh, 200 of lead buyers in the united states uh, yes, it is concentrated on the United States and uh, we defined five major uh, markets like home improvement, insurance, finance, legal and uh, handyman services. My home quote is like a marketplace where lead buyers can buy leads and uh, Customers can find services for themselves, like roofing, bathrooms, etc. And uh, if we talk about niches, we often divide them uh, to seasonal and evergreen. Uh, as I said before, um, windows, roofing, gutter, solar are just bombing now because uh, they are seasonal. And till the end of autumn, they will be on the wave. Um, do you think home also, services? Do you think home services like that are good verticals for newer affiliates to to get involved with, or do you think that's no. more of a, an experienced affiliate kind of game? Yeah, I think it's uh, for more experienced affiliates because, uh, firstly, it's absolutely white hat. And uh, some people, some affiliates, uh, they are used to uh, fast uh, benefits, fast profits. You know, they want to buy, to sell uh, very fast. Uh, and this is not a sprint. This is a race, a marathon race. And you need to uh, test a lot. You need to have uh, genuine traffic. You need to uh, spend a lot of time um, optimizing your campaigns. Uh, we advise to uh, start from about uh, $2,000 uh, to set up the campaigns and make them work properly because it's not really fast. Uh, about traffic sources, it's mainly in Facebook, uh, Google, native, organic. Um, you need to keep in mind that it is USA and that there is time difference and that call centers, they don't work usually 24 hours and seven days a week. So you need to mind the uh, hours, business hours, and the age of your target audience. The age of this target audience is uh, 30 plus, 45 plus, 55 plus even. Um, but in, uh, in the result, you will get uh, long-term perspectives like uh, trusted valuable partners, no risk campaign blocks. It's <laughs> number one, you know. And uh, 
nowadays we praise that uh, USA elections they influence affiliate marketing. It changes the cost uh, yeah. of traffic. I've already heard people talking about it, complaining about the, their Google costs or Facebook costs surging. Yeah, and just imagine how much it will cost uh, in autumn when it will be like uh, uh, the 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 most uh, profitable time uh, to run the elections uh, on ads spots. So uh, all the sports are now. Um, bought by uh, elections I, I will not say uh, the names <laughs> i will say elections <laughs> uh, yeah. so it's it's the right time to start now because the traffic is not so expensive it's expensive already but not so expensive as, as it will be in autumn you know mm, that is why i think it's uh, it's the right time to set up the campaigns uh, for usa now yeah, you mentioned uh, call centers a little bit ago, and I wanted to kind of dive in, you know, to the paper call side of of Click Dealer. I I wasn't really aware that you guys were in paper call until a couple years ago, when uh, you guys placed, you know, in the top three of our like top paper networks campaign. I was like, oh wow, okay, mm -hmm. cool. Um, <laughs> so what what led Click Dealer to kind of pursue that paper call route was it was it all the hype around paper call and you're like why aren't we doing this or were you actually looking at the numbers and you're like you know made like a math based decision a little bit of both what, what led you guys to get more involved with paper call? We have uh, been involved in paper calls since about uh, 2016. Uh, we had assets uh, to work with, but there were ups and downs of this vertical. Um, then uh, market panic about uh, generative AI killing the industry. Uh, it drove some players away. Uh, but the effect actually on the industry hasn't been as severe. Uh, only 10% of tech adoption rate by the end of 2033, we noticed personally. And uh, uh, the lead gen and the paper call ver verticals, they go hand in hand. That is why we returned to it and we developed it as uh, these are two directions we want to pursue, you know. Mm, and uh, also the acquisition by DMS, uh, uh, it gave us uh, more capabilities, more contact, more experience, and we united our force uh, with DMS company. Would you say when it comes to paper call, I'm like, would you say home services, um, and sh like, is the the hottest? place to be right now or would you say it's more insurance or what's what's your kind of take on the actual paper call specific verticals i will say it's about services or products that are customizable <laughs> and uh, that are can be recommended based on the user's personal situation you know there are people who like to text more and people who like to call more I bet that uh, people who like to call, they are more grown up. Let's uh, say like this. Um, home improvement, it uh, has a lot of parameters. Uh, home dimensions, uh, state regulations, um, maybe even prices. Uh, to receive the best product or uh, service, um, the user will have to provides all the data and the phone is uh, the right and convenient method for it. Uh, same goes for legal services. You need to uh, tell the case and uh, it will be easier to make it on phone. Uh, insurance is uh, is not like that. Uh, you don't need to tell a little a, a lot about your case or situation, but Usually these uh, terms of insurance, they have a lot of uh, pages of texts, uh, so no one likes to read a lot and it's more convenient to call and to know all the information by phone. And um, uh, when we talk about lead gen and uh, uh, single opt-in or double opt-in uh, landing pages, um, People don't like to fill out the forms. Uh, they will choose the shortest form. Uh, that's why 
by phone form yeah and by phone uh, they are likely to provide the extensive data uh, if they see the form long form they will not fill it out so that's why paper call is the best <laughs> in this situation yeah and you mentioned earlier about the smart link i know that's a big big part of click dealer you know as a network can you kind of break down from a bird's eye view like what a smart link actually is, how it works, and why it's so beneficial for networks to have smart links like that. Uh, yeah, smart link is uh, very interesting. That's uh, something artificial for me. Uh, smart link is a technology that directs a user to a relevant product. Yes, uh, based on its their location based on uh, their devices, connection types, and uh, set of parameters set by uh, SmartLink developers. It works with the traffic distribution system, selecting the product or landing page, uh, which are most likely to convert. Um, and uh, it happens just in a matter of seconds. Uh, standard smart links, uh, they use the uh, static uh, set of parameters and uh, are based uh, on country, device, connection type, but custom built in-house smart links, uh, which were uh, developed by the team in-house, uh, they have additional characteristics uh, like uh, city, user age, and even like time of the day, etc. Uh, and with this increased uh, range of parameters, reporting is more informative and uh, the affiliate can um, adjust their uh, uh, campaigns to more profitable. Uh, custom smart links, they use uh, machine learning uh, to analyze and predict behavior. Uh, so it's also... Um, better because uh, standard smart links, they don't self-optimize. Mm, also, unlike uh, the similar and uh, regular smart links, custom-built ones, uh, they can be integrated with fraud prevention. Uh, we all, always monitor uh, fraud partners patterns to exclude them. Mm, and also, uh, in-house uh, custom smart links, uh, they have teams of copywriters and designers who can create uh, more creatives uh, for uh, campaigns of our affiliates. And the last but not least, it's a dedicated manager, of course. Uh, so to sum up, uh, no, it, it, no, not to sum up, um, there is a common like knowledge and common thought that smart links are for newbies. Uh, well, maybe it was true, but like five years ago, uh, nowadays uh, the technology has progressed beyond that and running a smart link, it's an optimal choice for those who run several verticals, who, run, who has uh, various traffic uh, from mixed traffic from different countries. And uh, basically the advantages, as you asked, uh, they are algorithms which optimize campaigns for you it's uh, top creatives which were already done for you uh top offers uh, which are available in just one link uh and campaigns that are still adjustable and that have uh, great reporting mm, if an offer an ordinary offer can have a cap uh, SmartLink has uh, hundreds or thousands of offers and um, it would take a tremendous uh, amount of traffic to fill all the caps in this set. So now that Harrison and Adam used to work as like super affiliates back in the day before, uh, before they created Ringba, Adam and Harrison, I'm curious, like, I'm assuming you guys weren't using, like, smart links, were they a thing when you guys were in the heyday of doing that? Or do you remember? A bit. I remember some dating offers that had, like, kind of a dynamic link, but I think the technology has gotten substantially better. Um, I'm assuming if I'm running one of these smart links, I, I pick, like, a category of some sort, and then you kind of optimize this on your side based on that. 
uh, yeah. category that I select, correct? Is that right, Natalie? We, Do you yeah, select have, like? We used to have our own technology that would do some smart link activity on the backside. It wasn't nearly as sophisticated as what exists today. It didn't have to be. And I, you know, Josh, I, I think the technology gets pushed as far as required to get your financial outcome. So back then we could have probably improved it more, but it didn't matter. Like once you start winning, you don't, you don't really have to, to continue to innovate the technology. So it's come a really long way in the last 10 years for every segment of affiliate marketing. And without it, it's almost impossible to operate now. Adam, I, I was going to ask, it just came to me. I was going to ask, like, do you think now is the easiest time to find success as an affiliate? But then I was thinking like a long time ago, we used to call <laughs> it the wild, the wild, wild west of affiliate marketing, which also implied it. There was just less, less rules and, you know, less, uh, there it was more fluid. There were less opportunities to. I think approaching, is this the best time ever or whatever, is, is kind of a double-edged sword. I mean, look, the more technology improves, the bigger the internet gets, the more opportunity there's going to be, but it attracts more people, so there's more competition. And when technology is involved, technology can outperform humans, so you have to get more creative. And so I think the opportunities are just as good, if not better, than back in the day, but they're probably more complicated. And so we used to have to like really search out advertisers who could afford a lot of traffic. And that was a real problem for us back in the day. But today there's so much opportunity that that's not really an issue anymore. But if you want to turn a profit running campaigns, you have to have a lot more technology in place. You have to really understand how a lot of the industry works and traffic sources work and how the back ends of the offers work. And there's, there's just a lot more complexity around it today. So I think if I were getting started in this space, it would be fun to go back in time knowing what I know now. But I think <laughs> openly, I'd probably rather operate today because it is more complicated and you can do a lot more. And so when you win, you can win a lot bigger. Um, but it's not for the faint of heart. Like you're going to have to work. And I think affiliates today are working a lot more than than they used to back back in the day. But we know a lot more people that are making a shitload of money today than we did 10, 15 years ago. But so. you now have your experience and 10, 15 years ago, you didn't. <laughs> I don't know. 10 years ago, we were 10 years in. So I think we were pretty good. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, Natalie, I got one more question for you before we let you get out of here. You know, as the head of PR at a major network like Click Dealer, uh, I'm really curious on your answer on this. Let's say uh, there's a new company watching this episode right now. They have a $10,000 budget and they're debating back and forth. They can either put it towards an upcoming conference and go all in on the conference or they can put it towards like their their digital presence online through paid ads and media you can only go one way or the other which which way would you recommend would have a better <laughs> effect in terms of the way they spend that ten thousand dollars josh my favorite price is free so <laughs> I uh, I always try to find the solution that will require less money. Uh, if we're talking about paid ads like Google or Facebook ads uh, or Instagram ads, it's okay. I will choose Google ads. Uh, other, I will not choose. I will uh, write, um, I will find the groups, the forums, uh, Instagram pages, uh, uh, threads, etc. Whatever. Uh, it's free. You can post them and you can find the organic um, followers. It's simple. It doesn't require a lot of money and a lot of efforts. You can just tell your experience and people will read it. They will follow it and they will uh, write and um, or meet you uh, at least online. Uh, then I will spend, of course, uh, if I had $10,000, I can spend five on the conference 
uh, I can um, invite there five people and uh, just for attending, not taking any booth or meat market table, uh, just buying the attending uh, pass and they will uh, just spread around the conference and cover all, not all, okay, of course, but most of the people uh, being there. And uh, other 5,000 I will spend on Google ads, on banners, uh, like on OfferWorld uh, and other online. Um, yeah, I think the correct sites. answer is you, you spend all $10,000 on OfferVault, but I, I know what you mean. <laughs> I get what you're saying. Uh, Natalie, I want to say up. thank you. Thank you for coming on the Affiliate Marketing Show. We really appreciate you joining us and staying up late in Ukraine. For myself, Josh from Offer Vault, Mr. Paper Call, Adam Young, as well as the industry legend Harrison Gewurz, and our special guest, Natalie, head of PR at Click Dealer. Let's make that paper. Let's make that dough. This was the Affiliate Marketing Show. We'll see you next time.